I'm going to show you, uh, use as illustrations, two different network meta-analyses. The one that's going to illustrate a alternative approach that we're not particularly fond of, of using something called Sucra to make inferences about which treatment is better. Um, and uh, this is, uh, this meta-analysis looked at what fluids should be given to resuscitate people who have sepsis. And there's saline, there's low and high molecular weight, hydroxyethyl starches, and albumin, generin, and ge gelatin, and balanced crystalloid. Those are the options. Which should people give? The other one that I'm going to show you has 27 different interventions. It is children with diarrhea and trying to reduce the duration of their diarrhea. And you can imagine that when you have 27 interventions, sorting out their relative merit will be very challenging. So these are the two that we're going to focus on. This is the first one, uh, the network meta-analysis with the six, node, uh, six nodes, um, six nodes being in network meta-analysis technical language, a node is an intervention. And what you see is the comparison of every six, all of them in paired comparisons, one versus the other. You have the direct estimates, which were available for some, but not all. The indirect estimates, uh, which were available for all but one. And then what we're really interested, the pooling of the direct and the indirect estimates to generate a network, meta, uh, a network estimate. And as you can see, the certainty or quality of evidence we is associated with those network estimates is either moderate, low, or very low. We don't have any high certainty evidence here, but for each paired comparison, we find in through the network, not only the best estimate, but also uh, the certainty associated with those estimates. So the question then is how to decide what is best. And now another question for you, what is your familiarity with a statistic called SUCRA, which appears in many, many network meta-analyses? And most people, have uh, oh, uh, half of the people have no idea and half have um, uh, either partial or only a few people with thinks they have a good understanding. For those who have a partial or good understanding, is Sucra a good solution to this problem of deciding what treatment is best? Those of you who have a partial or full understanding, do you think it's a good approach, helpful but not ideal, or not so good? So thus far, uh, nobody thinks it's good, helpful but not ideal most, is most people's view of the matter. Well, we think there's lots of limitations with Sucre, but before talking about its limitations, I'll try to let you know, um, give you an idea of what Sucre is for those who have no idea, which was about half the people. One can construct a plot of the likelihood, let's start with the upper left-hand corner, balanced crystalloid. The likelihood that balanced crystalloid is the best, and it's over 40%. What's the likelihood it's second best? Well, between 30 and 40%. What's the likelihood that it's one of the worst? Very low. Let's contrast that with gelatin right underneath where it's unlikely to be first, second, third, or fourth, or even fifth. And the most likely thing is it ranks sixth. So you'd be much more inclined uh, on the basis of these rankings to use balanced crystalloid than you would gelatin. What the sucra is, is a single number that captures what's on this slide. 
So you could sort of think of it as an area under the curve and it gives a single number that captures the likelihood for each treatment of being first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth. And here are the sucras for these six treatments. Balanced crystalloid is the winner, 84.1%, albumin somewhat lower, and so on down to light starch, which is only, its sucra is only 24%. So if you were taking a really uh, somewhat superficial anyway, approach to this, you'd say, okay, balanced crystalloids, the best 84.1%, I'm going to give all my patients balanced crystalloid. But would you be doing a good thing? Maybe and maybe not, because there's lots of problems with this sucra. First of all, chance may explain the difference. 0.8 looks a lot bigger than 0.4 in a sucra, a chance might explain the difference. What is the magnitude of the difference? 0.8 looks a lot bigger than 0.4, but if we were to take odds ratios, they may not be that different. And if we were to take absolute effects, they may be very little difference. Well, those are important problems, but perhaps the most important limitation of Sucra is that the quality of evidence may be low for a higher Sucra. Something that looks good in sucra is not so good uh, when you look at the quality of the evidence. And you remember balanced crystalloid looks like the best, but in terms of saline, it's only low certainty evidence, moderate relative to balanced crystalloid with a confidence interval that just borders on no effect, moderate for balanced crystal for hydroxyacyl starches, but a confidence interval that considerably overlaps, no effect, and balanced and against albumin or gelatin, very low certainty of evidence. So you can see there that if we were to say, okay, let's use balanced crystalloid, well, maybe, but it remains, when you look at the certainty of the evidence, it, re it remains very uncertain whether we should be using balanced crystalloid. So, uh, there are these three problems with sucra, of which perhaps the most serious is that it ignores the certainty of the evidence.